You're listening to Sweet Life, the show that helps you find and walk your own special path. I'm Brooke Peterson. Here on Sweet Life, we like to explore unconventional career possibilities, self-discovery, professional development, and more. Whatever helps and whatever works to make it sweet. Because the olfactory bulb is part of the brain's limbic system, an area so closely associated with memory and feeling, it's sometimes called the emotional brain. And smell can call up memories and powerful responses almost instantaneously. Uh, and sure, the smell of freshly baked cookies might conjure up warm, fuzzy feelings for you, but someone else might link those same yummy cookies with pain or trauma or sadness. I know, it sounds insane. I mean, how could you think of chocolate chip cookies in a bad way like that? But it could happen. It could happen. Smell, in a sense, is very sensitive and very personal. Brent Leonesio is an artist, perfumer, and the creator of the indie scent maker Smellbent. It's an artsy, niche company with lots of spunk. I've had so much fun learning about Brent and his company, Smellbent, um, over the past couple of days. I have so many questions for him. Uh, Brent's career began in the fashion industry, designing clothes and accessories. And while pursuing a career in the world of design, Brent discovered his passion for perfume. And in 2009, the company he'd been working for, along with so many others, closed its doors. Brent decided to take that opportunity to create his own business, Smellbent. And I believe he started with a couple of unemployment checks, and look where he's gotten to now. Brent graduated from Sarah Lawrence College with a degree in art and art history. In fact, one of the fun and charming elements of his brand is the fabulous artwork associated with it. Um, the art, I, I don't know how to describe it, is very simple, but has so much style to it, and it's super young and hip. Um, Smellbent is, is described repeatedly in reviews, and I saw this over and over and over again, as playful, wacky, whimsical, irreverent, delightful, clever, and believe it or not, affordable. Yay! perfect for me. <laughs> I have never wanted a scratch and sniff computer so badly <laughs> until now. His work has grown to encompass fine fragrance, gallery work, artistic collaborations, custom and commercial formulations, teaching, and recently the creation of a smell bent comic book. What? Brent lives and works in Los Angeles and joins us now on the phone. Thank God. Thank you so much, Brent. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard my intro, but I had so much fun learning all about you and Smellbent. I think your company is super cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I get to have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, well, let's get, let me introduce you to everybody else. Okay, so uh, tell us about how you started with perfumery. I know you were in the fashion and design business, and where did perfumes come in for you? Uh, it came in as a hobby. I, uh, I was given a bottle of really expensive uh, cologne for my birthday. It was, it was about $200. And I loved it. And I, I blew through it. And at the bottom of the bottle, I was like, uh-oh, what am I going to do now? And I went online and I thought, maybe there's something kind of similar out there. Maybe there's, mm, I hate to say, a dupe of some sort. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I stumbled across uh, this community, an online community of people who love to talk about fragrance and discuss fragrance and smell fragrance. And it was a site called Base Notes. Mm -hmm. And um, Base Notes led me down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. uh, into this whole kind of perfume obsessive world where people smell things and talk about fragrance. And um, that's definitely where I started. Okay. Now, it's funny because um, speaking of that rabbit hole, I sort of had a little taste of that yesterday doing uh -huh. this research. And it was so much fun. I mean, I, I love perfume, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm any kind of perfumey perfumista or you know any kind of um connoisseur by any means but um but it was so much fun learning about perfume how to make it and so i know that you are completely self-taught right mm -hmm. and so what how did you get started how did you begin just playing around as a hobby when i uh when i was kind of collecting and smelling everything i thought oh there there's some ingredients that i've never smelled by themselves um some vintage musks that uh, they don't really use anymore. There were some sandalwood notes that I was interested in smelling. And it's kind of like um, if you've never had anything but cake tasting sugar for the first time. Right. And you go, oh, that's so interesting by itself. Um, so I ordered these ingredients, and I was kind of um, 
I was more curious. I had no, absolutely no idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I started tinkering around, and they smelled terrible. They made, you know, they were compositions that made no sense, but that's fine. <laughs> but that's that's kind of how I how I I didn't even know I was entering into something more than I was. I thought I was just kind of exploring in a different direction. So how did you like? W- did you start with? Um, okay, so I did learn that there are bass notes, middle notes, and top notes. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And so um, when you were getting started, did you just sort of get yourself a handful of each and then start playing around? How did you know where to begin? That was part of my problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I've kind of drawn to the, the baser smells, mm-hmm. uh, the musks, the woods, um, the kind of animal notes that we use um, in scents. And so that's kind of what I ordered to it. That's what I was interested in. Mm-hmm. And so when you put all those together, they don't really... Uh, make a perfume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And so... The, um, the idea is, uh, it has to do with chemical weight, which I'm not, I call myself an accidental chemist uh-huh. because that's not my, I have an art background. I don't have a chemistry background. But um, when you apply a perfume to your skin, the smaller molecules fly off first because they're the lightest. Okay. So that's what you smell. Okay. So the first ones are called top notes. Those are things like citrus um, that smell fresh and bright and kind of um, open up a perfume. Uh, The middle notes encompass a lot of florals, uh, the traditional floral notes. And then the base notes are kind of heavier and darker. Mm -hmm. And when you wear a perfume, that's really what most of your wear is going to be. So if somebody sprays a test strip for you at the perfume counter, Mm -hmm. what you're smelling is just the start of the perfume which is why you should always kind of wear it or walk around with it because there's so many times that you love the beginning of a perfume but you don't like the middle or the end. Interesting. So it sounds like wine almost. Are you a really good wine taster too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a wine taster. I'm, I'm kind of picky when it comes to food, and I don't know if that has to do with my nose. Interesting. Well, I mean, you know, the taste and smell are so often linked. Um, but sorry, I, 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 I'm veering off a little bit. No, so, no. I, you know, I, I, a girl I went to school with, she, um, she's a sommelier, and we were talking. I, I don't uh, drink, so I don't, um, I don't know anything about wine. But um, we were talking at our re- high school reunion, and I was like, oh, my God, we do the same thing. Right. We just kind of do it in different areas. Yeah, exactly. I was, when I was reading this, I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm at a wine tasting. So you know, if you have this, these top notes, the citrus, okay. how fast do they go away? How, how long do they last? About five minutes. Okay, so why have fast. them? Why are they there? Why are they there? Well, um, you can think of a perfume composition as a song, or three songs, if you want. Okay. Um, and the reason that you have uh, this kind of layered composition is because if you don't have a top note, if you don't have a middle note, mm-hmm. if you don't have a base note, you're going to have dead spots in your perfume. Oh. You're going to have areas in which you really, the fragrance goes mute. Oh, interesting. In addition, the, um, the entire idea of perfume is to make something that's kind of beautiful and unnatural in and of itself, right? Yeah. We're trying to create a composition, a song that's more than just a noise. So we have to bring all these elements into harmony, and one way we do that is creating a kind of varied composition. Yeah, that's that's beautiful how you describe it. And I can sort of understand. So with the bass notes, do those not kick in for a few minutes or a little bit of time? Is is are there is there a lag with them? Is that is it a timing thing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because they're they're bigger molecules and they're heavy, so they kind of stick to your skin. Um, certain musk molecules that we use are so heavy they'll stay on your skin for days. That's why we use them like in laundry detergent, because you can put them through the wash and the dry, and they still are hanging on. Oh, that's, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now you said you were an accidental chemist. Um, how long did it take? Oh, you know what? We're running out of time for just the first break. I'm going to make this real quick. Sure. How long did it take you to get the chemistry part of it all? Ooh, uh, I'm still working on the question? chemistry part. <laughs> um, when you started getting uh, when you started getting involved, how much money did you use to invest to get going? I started my company with five thousand dollars. Oh, okay. So it's time, it was my unemployment checks, and I was like, "Let's try it." Yeah, good for yeah. you. Good for and um, how often was it start hard to get started on the internet? I mean, people can't smell. <laughs> mm. I had been buying perfume on the internet for a while, so it, it kind of didn't occur to me. Mm. Um, it's I want funny to smell now in hindsight so because it just wasn't a thing I was resistant to. Yeah. 
Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about where we can find your perfumes. Um, sounds great. Great, yes. We are talking with uh, Brentley and SEO from Smellbent, a really cool perfume, uh, niche perfumery here in Los Angeles. Don't go anywhere. We've got lots more coming at you. Happy Thursday. You're listening to Sweet Life. I am Brooke Peterson, and we are here bringing you whatever helps and whatever works to make it sweet. I love talking to interesting people, and today we are talking to Brent Leonesio. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, Leonesio. Uh, Leonesio. Yeah. Okay, good. And he is the owner, founder, and uh, chief perfumer of Smellbent here in Los Angeles. And uh, you started in 2009, and it sounds like you have a pretty hot following right now. Is that right? I have been very fortunate that I've uh, I found an audience. Yeah, so yeah. tell, for anybody who hasn't seen their website, go to smellbent.com, get a great idea of their their sense of humor and their, their spunk. I love the artwork. How would you describe your artwork to people? Oh, uh, primitive? <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. I get that, yeah. sure. <laughs> Pri- primitive, comical. Um, you know, it started because I, I didn't have anything to take pictures of, so um, I was sitting around with a, a friend of mine, and I said, let's just draw some pictures, and they probably shouldn't be very good. So. <laughs> but what I love, and so many of the the articles and reviews of your your um, company, is that they always talk about how fun and whimsical you guys are, but the scents are legit. Like, they are always very um, favorable, and, and, and really talk about just how, like, serious the actual scents are. Um, do you have a favorite? Well, I, I definitely think that's kind of deceptive. Yeah, the uh, the drawings sometimes put people off that it's kind of a kid's line or something. And and um, while I'm not serious about most things, I'm definitely serious about making good perfume. Mm-hmm. Um, a favorite? I mean, that's choosing my children, right? You know, I, <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. It, it depends on the day. You know, yeah. it's usually whatever the last thing I made was. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, occasionally I come across something that I haven't smelled in a while. I go, oh, yeah, that's good. You know, it's kind of nice. You get a little distance. Right, yeah. But as an artist, it's hard sometimes to step back and go, oh, yeah, I love that. You just kind of see how it's made. Right. Now, I I saw descriptions of these scents as, you know, playful or whimsical. What makes a scent playful and whimsical? I have a hard time really imagining that. Mm, I think uh, think that has to do more with the presentation. Um, What I was responding to when I I started Smellbent was the, um, the kind of gravity and and uh, luxury problem of the of the fragrance world um so much so much time is spent on like creating the most luxurious the most elegant um kind of presentation and and i found that off-putting um it there i i had i had found so much joy in fragrance um and this kind of crazy perfume world that um it was kind of at odds with what was actually being presented so i i tried to I tried to bring those two ideas together when I started the company. And how can people um, find you and, and smell your perfume so they can, you know, they can choose one? Oh, of course. If you live in Los Angeles, go to my favorite store, the Pygmy Hippo Shop on <laughs> <Where's> Stanley. The... <laughs> the Pygmy... uh, I'll be doing a trunk show there next month. Or we sell samples of everything online. So we'll send you whatever you want. <laughs> Pygmy Hippo. Pygmy Hippo? Did you just say that? The Pygmy Hippo Shop. Oh, my God. It's amazing. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like, was it your uh, Hungry Hungry Hippies perfume? Hungry Hungry Hippies. <laughs> the smell of pot brownies and patchouli. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, okay, so for, for anybody who is wanting to uh, get involved, what kind of equipment do you need to make your perfumes? Uh, when I started, it was pretty basic. Um, uh, relatively, uh, relatively easy to do at home if you want to get started. Um, I would say small bottles, um, especially if you're tinkering around. You never want to make more than three or four milliliters of anything because it's just a waste. Mm. Uh, you can always multiply out a formula. It's hard <laughs> if you're if you're working in a liter bottle or we got work in metric that also helps. So small bottles, um, I would say a range of essential oils are a good place to start. Um, relatively inexpensive ones also help, you know, things like orange oil, cedar. Um, these things aren't expensive. Um, and especially if you can source them online, um, buying things at the, like the Whole Foods or the grocery store is 
probably not a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say if if you want to work with uh, synthetic ingredients, you can find some fragrance oils and kind of mess around with those. Um, Fragrance oils are kind of like ready-made miniature perfumes Hmm. that you can play with. Okay. Um, Buying uh, aroma chemicals and kind of like the basic building blocks is a little more advanced, and that's where I got into trouble because that's where I started. Mm-hmm. Um, those things are available online um, if you want to buy musk molecules or, or the actual ingredients that commercial fragrances use. Um, what's really nice is that in the Internet age, those things are available in small quantities to, to amateur perfumers. Fantastic. So you just sort of, what, you just drop them? What do you do? (laughs) Well, a lot of ingredients have to be diluted. Um, There are a lot of great books out there on how to make perfumes along with um, sample compositions. And um, those will get you started, like give you a rough guideline. You know, they're cookbooks for perfume, basically. And they're they're options for both natural and synthetic. Um, You know, a lot of people, natural perfume is kind of blowing up right now, and a lot of people love that idea. Um, but there's a lot, you know, like essential oils, most of them have to be diluted before you can apply them to the skin. Why is that? So there are some safety things, you know. Because oh. um, I had heard a, a few of... years ago, I think, that, that some that perfumes were bad for you or something. Is that true? Is that what you're referring to, the essential oils? or? Um, well, perfume is, we do have kind of a bad reputation, don't we? Um, I don't know. Is it true? <laughs> is perfume bad? No. <laughs> Perfume's amazing. Um, no, there's uh, there's definitely, we kind of, uh, we live in this world where a lot of people have um, sensitivities to things or they've had a bad experience with fragrance. People wear too much fragrance. They wear, um, they get in a crowded elevator mm. or they know someone who wears too much scent. Yeah. Um, maybe you've gotten a headache from wearing something. Um, okay. Maybe you've had a, a reaction, a you know, breaking out from a detergent. These are um, these are things that people encounter in 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 the the world all the time, and so they think perhaps a natural perfume will make it better, or um, I won't have as there's a there's an idea that these natural perfumes are kind of safer, mm. um, but a lot of the natural ingredients can cause more problems. Um, things like cinnamon and pennyroyal, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of irritants in the natural in the natural world as well. So, hmm. I mean, use caution, um, apply a little bit before you go crazy. And uh, So it's not about whether it's an essential oil or an alcohol-based or I'm not even sure what the other options are. Is is mainly about the specific ingredients and how a person reacts to it? Uh, yeah, for, for the most part. Um, a lot of people think they're allergic to certain ingredients when most of the time they just kind of have a tired olfactory, mm-hmm. uh, what's called olfactory fatigue, which is when your nose just gets tired and you get a headache. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, God, this perfume's giving me a headache. Um, you know, when I was in the 10th grade, the girl who sat in front of me who wore so much Tommy girl that, like, my poor head would explode every morning. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, that is, that's more common. Um, but we definitely are living, like, in a time where, where scents are kind of um, not quite as grand as they were and... Um, a lot of people have bad associations with the perfume counter. So. Do you have a favorite ingredient? Like My the, favorite ingredient? Yeah, what's your favorite? Oh, I love sandalwood. I love patchouli. I love, um, I love rose, like a real rose mm. and iris. Mm. Um, I mean, there's so many great. How many ingredients so many great are ones. there? Like, I mean, it, it just seems, when I was doing this, when I was reading uh, all these things I had never even heard of or certainly never, th- when you go out, this is two questions in one, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sure. A, how many ingredients do you play with on a, on a regular basis? And B, when you go out into the world, is your nose just constantly, are you like a bloodhound out there? <laughs> like just constantly <laughs> There are things? times I definitely turn it off. You know what I mean? Where you're like, mm, uh, just going to have a, and for the most part we have uh, what's like, uh, what do you call it? We've evolved to kind of screen out scents. So, like, if your house smells like chicken, you know, after you've made, you know, mm-hmm. enchiladas or something, yeah. you're not going to smell your house smells like enchiladas. If I come over, I go, oh, it smells like enchiladas in here. You know what I mean? That's true, yeah. But you, we get used to whatever smell. That's why um, 
people who smoke don't smell smoke. And um, mm-hmm. so for the most part, no, I don't. I'm, I don't have bionic smell. I mean, that would be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of feel like you know, the, people find their passions for a reason, and I think different people have different stronger senses. Mm-hmm. Um, so I bet you, I'd be willing to bet your nose is much better than mine. Um, I, I like to say that it's kind of like um, people who play. We there's a there's this kind of thing that noses are uh, given this um, kind of mythical ability, mm. but it's a lot like music. We don't. This is a secret. Don't tell anyone, Brooke. This mm. is just between you and me. It's kind of like music. Um, you can train your ear. You can train your nose. Ooh. So everyone can get better if they want. We just don't, most people just aren't interested or they feel like it's out of their world or. Right, right. Now, I know you uh, mentioned on your website that you're teaching. I am. I'm doing a class May 1st um, downtown at the really super cool Institute for Art and Olfaction, which is a new organization here in Los Angeles. Um, That is great because when I was doing a little bit of reading, it's, you know, there aren't really um, a whole lot of educational institutions around for this kind of thing. Exactly, and I couldn't get anyone to teach me. So mm. teaching has always been something that I've been drawn to because it just wasn't available to me. Um, I'm teaching. I'm teaching a class on aroma uh, aroma chemicals, which are the synthetic building blocks of fragrance, on May first, and then I believe in June I'm doing a workshop on um, composition. So that'll be a little more hands on. Both of them, you'll get to smell everything we talk about. That's awesome. Um, now, is this for like professionals, or is this for people no, like me for who just want to play? Yeah, just come. You can you can learn a little bit more about uh, the perfume history and ingredients and that kind of thing. It's totally open to if you don't know anything about perfume, it would be just as fun. That sounds awesome. And people can find this on your website. Uh, yes, on the blog, I'll put links up to everything. Okay, and um, we only have a few more minutes, sadly. But um, two things: one. How did this comic book come about, and how does that tie in with uh, with your with your perfumes? Uh, well, the, you know, like you said, the drawings have always been kind of a, a part of the the world, the mm-hmm. the world of smell bent. And I um, I was seeing someone, and they had all these comic books, and I was like, oh, I haven't. I was like, what are these? And I started looking at them, and the art was amazing, and I was like, this is so exciting. And then I was like, wait. I could do that with smell that all the all these characters I've been making over the years could oh. inhabit their own world. So it's about the characters of the sense. This, yes, the characters of the sense are characters in the comic book. Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> that's really great. Very clever. And I'm also in it too. So <laughs> very know. clever. And um, now, if you could design a, a scent for any celebrity, who would it be, and why? Oh, God, that's a that's a tall order. Yeah. Hmm. And alive or dead, it could be for Audrey Hepburn. Oh, well, she already has one. I know. I just learned that today, actually. Yeah. Forbidden. And you can still buy it. And is it the same? Um, is it the same oh composition? Oh God, you stumped me, bro. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to do that. But so this forbidden—is it the same forbidden from you know fifty years ago, or is it different now? Well, the thing is, um, uh, perfume ingredients have undergone um, restrictions in terms of, uh, especially in Europe. Um, there's a, a lot more regulation regarding what you can and the quantities in which you can use it, um, along with um, kind of the ethical perspective, uh, which means that there's a lot of ingredients we used to use, and in fact, we used too much, um, so they aren't readily available or they're cost prohibitive. Mm. Things like sandalwood was overforested in India and, and no longer is really available, um, and so it's kind of unethical to to be using ingredients like that on a large scale mm. um, and it's also it would make the perfume too expensive okay. um, so certain animal ingredients we no longer use and those were found in a lot of perfumes at the beginning of the 20th century mm. um, I don't know if they were ever in the Givenchy's but um, so things like that what happens and unfortunately in the industry is uh, perfumes become uh, what's called reformulated and it's not uh, it's never publicized um, a scent just kind of undergoes a, like a, a a minor tweak sometimes sometimes a big tweak and um, but it's you know it's still sold under the same name or the same packaging and um, it usually upsets its core customer base but it's it's probably done for budgetary reasons yeah 
Yeah. Well, I guess it, it all comes down to, you know, what, what's reasonable and what you can do. But um, we have been talking with uh, Brent Leonesio from Smellbent. There's so much more I wish we could talk about. However, go to his website, smellbent.com. Check out his lines. He's got so many choices there. I can't wait to uh, get my nose into some of these guys. Thank you so much, Brent. You've been listening to Sweet Life. I'm Brooke Peterson. You can like us on Facebook by searching Sweet Life Radio Show. Until next time, make it sweet.